We love sharing Disney Park history. Today we explore history and trivia from the Land Pavilion at Walt Disney World Epcot. First, a bit of Epcot history. You may know that Epcot was Walt's idea for an experimental community. In his original plans, people would actually live there, but this idea for Epcot was abandoned when Walt died. Years later, after the popularity of the Magic Kingdom Park, which opened in 1971, Disney began plans for a second theme park in Florida to meet demand. The idea of executing on Walt's idea and creating an experimental community of tomorrow was scrapped. But they did take some of the Epcot concepts and began designing a theme park version of Epcot instead of the planned community idea where people would live. The plans for the Epcot theme park went through many iterations, but always included educational components or edutainment, including edutainment around the earth and living harmoniously with the land around us. Even the earliest Epcot theme park plans had some sort of earth or land-based attraction in the park, which ultimately led to the land pavilion we have today. The land pavilion opened with Epcot in 1982. This pavilion fulfilled the edutainment factor around living harmoniously with the earth. Originally, it was going to be sponsored by Georgia Pacific, a logging and paper products company. This sponsorship meant the pavilion would focus on the earth's environments. The design was really different. This version of the pavilion was designed with seven crystal structures that would have housed five different environments, plus an agricultural and an urban section. It would have started with a film in a Carousel of Progress style theater. The film would have introduced a character called the Land Keeper who would guide the guests. After the film, guests would enter the rest of the land. The big attraction was planned to be Blueprints of Nature, a Peter Pan style hot air balloon track ride. If the Land Keeper in style sounds familiar, it makes sense because Tony Baxter, the now somewhat famous Imagineer, designed this early version. And although it wasn't realized, his ideas did manifest in the form of the Dream Finder and Figment in the Journey into Imagination Pavilion. Georgia Pacific ended up dropping out as a sponsor and Kraft took over. That's when Tony Baxter's design and the Earth's environment's idea got revised. The seven glass domes became a single mountain-like structure and the focus shifted from the Earth's habitats to food and agriculture as that lined up more with craft foods. What's interesting is although Georgia Pacific did drop out a sponsor for the Land Pavilion, they have had a partnership with Disney since then. Disney partnered with Georgia Pacific in 2005 to feature brawny paper towel products as well as tissue paper, Dixie cups, and other Georgia Pacific products in their theme parks. Georgia Pacific's brawny paper towels was even the presenting sponsor of the now closed Hollywood Studio Lights, Motors, Action, Extreme Stunt Show in Florida. Kraft Foods, as the new sponsor, wanted a fresh design and wanted the focus to be on food and agriculture. The new design by Imagineer Raleigh Crump included a boat ride called Listen to the Land that we of course now know as Living with the Land. It also included the Harvest Theater that would originally debut Symbiosis. Of course, this theater has gone through many names and films since then. Kraft also wanted a ride that focused on nutrition. That's why Kitchen Cabaret was designed. Kitchen Cabaret was an odd audio animatronic show featuring singing food characters. It was replaced with Food Rocks, another food-based musical attraction, this time sponsored by Nestle, 12 years later in 1994. Both shows had a focus on food groups and healthy eating with musical food characters singing somewhat educational type songs. The land also opened with two dining options, the first level food court style area called the Farmer's Market and a rotating upper level restaurant called The Good Turn, an actual rotating restaurant. The first level farmer's market seating area had an extremely popular fountain in the center that was later removed. Many people miss this nostalgic fountain. The Good Turn rotating restaurant today, known as the Garden Grill, was an original idea from Tony Baxter's designs. It was going to be a rotating restaurant in the treetops of the multiple crystal structure design. 
When Tony's lands were scrapped, they kept the rotating restaurant idea. But instead of being high in the treetops, guests see parts of the Listen to the Land ride interior as the restaurant slowly rotates. Many people have heard that the food grown in the greenhouses and living with the land is served in the park. Garden Grill in particular can boast that they use the fresh food from the greenhouses one story beneath them. From Walt's first idea for Epcot as a community where people live to the theme park it became, Epcot always seemed to include research and living in the latest technology. And research into the new tomorrow seemed to always intrigue Walt as highlighted so well in his plans for Epcot. The Land Pavilion followed these ideas with the Listen to the Land, now called Living with the Land, ride. This ride area past the show and into the greenhouses is dedicated to research with experimental horticulture techniques in hydroponics, irrigation methods, and integrated pest management. Kraft Inc., Walt Disney World, along with the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Agricultural Research Service, developed this lab initially, and it gives guests a look at how biotechnology is creating higher quality crops. One of the coolest things about the Land Pavilion is the Behind the Seeds Tour. This tour has been running since 1982 under various names. It takes guests on a behind the scenes walking tour of the greenhouses and lab area of the Living with the Land ride. This tour is one of our favorites because it teaches you about biotech and plant innovations, and it is also very inexpensive at $35 a person, relative to other Disney tours, that is. After the initial opening in 1982 of Epcot with the Land Pavilion under Kraft sponsorship, the next major changes came when Nestle took over as sponsor in 1993. Nestle's Carnation brand name had had a long history with Disney. Carnation was one of the original Disneyland sponsors back in 1955, initially with the Carnation Ice Cream Parlor on Main Street, and Carnation Ice Cream could be found around the park. This new sponsorship agreement brought in even more Nestle brand names, not just Carnation, and included the sponsorship of the Land Pavilion in Epcot. With the new sponsorship by Nestle, the pavilion was given a more modern look. The Kitchen Cabaret Review became Food Rocks, and Listen to the Land was renamed to Living with the Land. The Symbiosis movie presentation reopened as Circle of Life, an Environmental Fable, a new film featuring characters from The Lion King, bringing in the first IP to the pavilion. After Nestle took over sponsorship in 1993, not much changed at the Land Pavilion until Soren was opened in 2005. Soren was intended to open in one of the World Showcase countries, actually. But when none could be decided upon, it was decided Soren would open in the Land Pavilion. Taking over the Food Rocks ride area, in addition to needing a new show building to house the large Soren attraction. It opened as Soarin' with the same video as the Soarin' Over California ride that had debuted in Disney's California Adventure Park in Anaheim. During the Land Pavilion's refurbishment to construct Soarin', the building received a small spruce up, with new paint colors, new lighting, and the hot air balloons were repainted to represent the four seasons. This is also the time when the popular fountain was removed from the first level. Shortly after the renovation and addition of Soarin', in 2009, Nestle's sponsorship of the Land Pavilion ended, and the pavilion itself has remained without a sponsor since then. Not much has changed in the Land Pavilion since 2005 and the subsequent loss of Nestle's sponsorship. However, the Soren Ride did switch its ride video from the original California-focused film to the new Soren Around the World film, where riders get to see major landmarks around the world instead of just California. Despite changes over the years, the Land Pavilion feels distinctly original Epcot and still has a nostalgia to it that reminds us of the way Epcot was when it opened. We love the way this pavilion has been revised, but still feels dated and original somehow. Let us know what you love about the Land Pavilion in the comments below, and if you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe for more.